Greetings one and all to the Dupe Movie Podcast. My name is Brian. My name is Keith. And we are here to talk about movies so you don't have to. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the 2021 James Wan film Malignant. Yes. It just released uh, this weekend. Yeah. As of this recording, it released two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. this is... This is this is a new one for us. Uh, as such, we don't have a box office estimate. Right. Uh, they say it's it's on track to make somewhere between fifty and sixty million, but they're not sure. What do you mean, just for the weekend, or just like in general? Cause in that's... in general. Okay, I was about to say like that sounds pretty high. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in general. You know, but I mean that's just an estimation, and you never know. Yeah. Sometimes estimations are lower, higher. I, I, I. By the time that we put this video up, I'll probably be able to have enough information to make a comment about a fact check yeah. about this back office stuff because that's I, a good idea. You know, I, I generally like I like following box office information. You know, on movies in general, like um, Dan Merle, uh, is a YouTuber who I follow, and uh, he has these charts. Um, you know, every Monday or Tuesday, depending on if it's a weekend, cool, on cool. like a holiday weekend. Um, he's checking the box office, so. You know, I'll definitely have that for you in the comments section below. Cool. I, I'm actually appreciative because uh, uh, by the time this goes up, we will, like like you know, we, like you said, we'll have extra, we'll have access to how it did, mm-hmm. you know, opening scene-wise. Yeah. Um, I was going to just add a little insert, mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, this is future Brian speaking, but right. if you're going to do that in the comment, then I don't have to do that. So, less work for me. There you go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> So yeah, uh, as I said, this is directed by James Wan, who, or is it Wan? Is it Wan or Wan? Wan. Wan. Okay, James yeah. Wan, who uh, directed the, wrote and directed the Saw movies, mm-hmm. uh, the Conjuring films, uh, Insidious, mm-hmm. and Aquaman, yep. the DC movie, which yeah. was one of the like two good ones out of the whole spate. <laughs> Writers were uh, James Wan, Ingrid Bisu, who uh, also wrote the Super YOLO show, if anybody's ever heard of that. Okay. And uh, Akela Cooper who was credited for the screenplay, who did a lot of episodes for uh, Grimm and The 100 and uh, American Horror Story and Luke Cage. Okay. But not yeah. a lot of movie writing. Yeah. Yeah, I, li- I like The 100. That's a, that's a great show. Luke Cage was good, too. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I like I like the uh, first half of the first season of Luke Cage, and then mm. it goes into different directions that I didn't really appreciate, but... Understood. You know? Understood. So, yeah, uh, the uh, the main cast is... is uh, Madison, played by Annabelle Wallace, mm-hmm. who uh, you might recognize from Annabelle, yeah. uh, and from the 2017 The Mummy, mm-hmm. and uh, from Piggy Blinders, from back in the day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and then her sister, Sydney, played by Maddie Hansen, uh, is from Twisted and Impulse and Mr. Mercedes, a bunch of TV series. Yep. The the cast of this movie is like a who's who of, of television series. Mm-hmm. So... We're not going to get into the whole cast right now. I just yeah. want to kind of talk talk on the main two for right. a second, you know. Uh, and and uh, like the fact that we're going to put this video up later, it might give the audience time to to find the movie and watch mm-hmm. it and have their own opinion of it. But before we you know get into any of those things, I wanted to go ahead and say a little like a spoiler warning sort yeah. of thing because we're going to deep dive into this film. Yeah, you know? we're we're going to cover all the plot points. We're going to do all the twists, all the turns. You know? We're not going to leave anything on the floor. Right. So, you know, this is this is your time now to pause and come back. I just want to say that I recommend it for sure, you know. Um, yeah. It's, it's very different. It's very unique. And it's uh, it's got a great atmosphere to it. And that, yeah. you know, I think would be appreciated. Uh, the, um, the final sequence, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to go into any more right. specific detail than that right. yet, but the final sequence is worth the price of admission alone for me. Yeah. As a film goer. Right. Uh, now, uh, Keith has a lot more experience with horror movies than I do. So he's going to have a lot more insight on how this is as a horror movie mm-hmm. than I will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will say just as a movie, it was well put together and I would also recommend it. Yep. All right. Well, let's get into it. It's um, the first scene. We show up at the Simeon Research Hospital in uh, 1993. Yeah. Simeon like the name, not like the monkey. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is, oh, by the way, this is also put out by New Line Cinema. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the same people who did the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Yeah, I, yeah. And so, um, you know, at the uh, initially we we have Doctor Weaver, you know, giving this talk on this video case, like basically like recording, you know, mm. um, based on how certain patients are doing. Mm. Played um, uh, played by Jacqueline McKenzie, mm-hmm. who was from the Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood, 
and has done a bunch of TV appearances like NYPD Blue and stuff like that. Cool. She's talking about uh, Gabriel is the person, uh, you know, she he's not reacting, po- you know, um, positively and, you know, so on and so forth. So Yeah, he's, he's a patient under their care yeah. is all we know at this point. Yeah, you know. Um, and then suddenly, like, there's some commotion down, down the hallway, you know, and, like, the lights are flickering and stuff. And, uh, you know, there's this, like, a couple of the workers out there, one of them was, like, injured, you know, like, had his whole hand, like, completely, like, bloodied up, yeah. you know, pretty much. Um, and they go... Yeah, you could see the bones poking out of his arm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, he's he's very violent, apparently. So, yeah. Whoever yeah. this Gabriel is, he's breaking people in half. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, they, good times. Yeah, they... Uh, they find somebody to drag Gabriel to this chair to like kind of administer him down to it, you know. Well, they they send in, she sends in the security guards first, I think, right. with the with the dart guns. Yeah, and the security guard gets knocked away, and then she picks up the dart gun and shoots him. Yeah, we we still haven't seen Gabriel yet. No, yeah, you don't see yeah you don't see Gabriel per se, but I mean, yeah. you know, you 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 make the assumption this is Gabriel, you know. Yeah, like. You know, she he, she was just talking about Gabriel. You know, on the video and then message, somebody busted and then in somebody, and said, "He's escaped. He's gotten to the records yeah, room." Yeah, I mean, yeah. To, you know, make the connection there. But basically, you know, they 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 drag him forward to this table, the standing table, pretty much, and they like lock him in there. They bound him there, and at some point, it's like he's like, there there's there's some choice dialogue here. It's uh, it's like whenever they try to do an EKG. Uh, sort of administer yeah. on him. It's like he's drinking the electricity, you know. We tra- yeah, room. we tried to do electroshock therapy, you but know? it's like he feeds in the electricity. Yeah, yeah. And, like he can like display messages on like the radio station. Yeah, he so can talk so through like, electronic devices, you know? so he can speak through radios and cell phones and things like that. You know. So Doctor Reaver's like, well, oh, and and I'm sorry, I don't know if we mentioned this, but this uh-huh. intro is 1997, three, ninety three. Sorry, yeah. ninety three, nineteen ninety three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh. Yeah, after that, you know, Dr. Weaver says, like, we're going to have to cut out the cancer. It's and time then, to cut out the cancer. So, th- after that, it comes to, like, a typical montage of um, some surgery being done. You know, it's like a... It's, I'm not a big fan of the way these credits are displayed, mostly just because, like, it's it's displaying it over something, and then, like, there are some new stories. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it, I get it. It's for exposition purposes. It's just, I could have dealt with, it like, a more you know, a uh, creative way to display this information. Yeah, it's like, but... it's it's news clippings that are, like, flashing up on screen right. that say things like, controls electricity and extremely violent yeah. and stuff Very like that. Radioactive, so on and so forth. Yeah. But it's, it's, you know, it, it's whatever, you know. It could be, it could have been better, but it definitely could have been worse, so, you know. Yeah. After that, uh, cut to present day. Uh, Maddie, She's a pregnant nurse coming to coming home from like a probably an overnight shift. I would imagine. Yeah, it's Annabelle Wallace, you know, yeah. um, and come home to Derek, who is just like lazing about in bed, you know, watching TV. Yep, uh, played by Jake Abel. Mm-hmm. He's from the he's Luke in the Percy Jackson movies, and he's also he was also their younger brother on Supernatural. Okay. He was Adam. Uh, also, he was Michael the Archangel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, she comes home and she's telling him, like, you know, she's very tired, like, you know, work is, you know, pretty, uh, pretty stressful for her because not, not only is, you know, being a nurse stressful in and of itself, she's also pregnant. So, yeah. like, there's a lot of stress that she has to face. And, you and know. she's, like, at least six, probably seven or eight months pregnant. Like, she's definitely yeah. got the bump and, and it's not yeah. even a bump, it's a full belly. Yeah, this is the third trimester. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. um, you know, do any day pretty much, you know. Yeah. So she, she, like, turns off the TV, they get into a little argument, Derek was like, you know, oh, well, I mean, well, my wife, why have so many of, like, my seed have just, you know, died off inside of you, pretty much. Yeah, he's like, a he's, real jackass, you know, it's like, how many of my children do I have to watch die inside you? Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, yeah. like, she's had, so, you know, she's had mis- miscarriages, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, and it's like, she's blaming her for it, it was mm-hmm. like, there's, like, really, there's nothing that she could have done to, yeah. you know not have a miscarriage like that's that, that's yeah that's disrespectful you know? it's horrible you know he's an insensitive prick i wrote that in my notes i also said i also wrote oh abusive too yeah because he she, slams her against the wall yeah slams her against the wall like she was bleeding in the back of her head yeah she, like, she he cracks the plaster of yeah. the wall with the back of her head yeah so that's so he runs downstairs to get her a towel and she locks the bedroom door mm-hmm. to keep him out and then kind of like falls asleep against the door yeah um 
And and he's a, just a real jackass. Yeah, he sure is. You know, he uh, Derek is downstairs, um, and then like the blender is on in the kitchen, and I was like, oh well, is uh, you know, is Maddie outside of the room yet? Is is she like going here just to make some smoothies or something? Yeah. And then there's there's nothing in it. There's nothing around there. Like yeah, like you're watching a horror movie, so you're thinking, okay, this is too obvious. This isn't going to be a scary thing. This is just like. Something's going to happen, and it's not going to be real. Right. Um, so, but he goes in the kitchen, and there's the blenders on, and the kitchen door, and the... Uh, yeah, the fridge. The fridge door kind of opens by itself. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Maddie? Yeah. Is that you? What's going on? Yeah, the TV clicks on by itself, pretty much. And you see this sort of, like, sort of, like, really shadowish figure, you mm-hmm. know, sitting on the te- on the couch. But at first, the I thought it was Maddie, at first. Know? And then, you know, turn the lights on, and then there's nobody there. Yeah. You know, but you see in the next shot, the, the couch seat, like, kind of, like, comes back up. Yeah, you know, like something sitting, invisible was sitting on it. You know, it's like if somebody, you know, was sitting there too long, and then, like, it's coming back up into place. Like, it's, you know, it's a very nice... It's a, it's a good little visual moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very good visual moment. Um, you know, that's... And then... And, hmm? Oh, in, in my notes, all, all my notes here is they just say, bye, Derek. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. I guess what's gonna happen next? Uh, the shadow, <laughs> the shadow figure that I just mentioned attacks Derek uh, on the side, you know, from behind, pretty much. You yeah. Know? And uh, Maddie wakes up due to, due to all the commotion and the noises and such. Yeah. You know, uh, she goes downstairs and she finds Derek, and like he is like malformed, like, like yeah, she's, like, like he's his his head is twisted completely backwards, and his neck is like sticking out sideways. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then at some point, she is chased up the stairs, and then, you know, she finds her way to the the bathroom. She tries to, you know, hold herself against the door, but, like, she is pushed back, and then mm. eventually, like, the, the door flies off the hinges, and then, like, she gets knocked out. So, the, uh, the police and the, you know, um, uh, ambulances show up mm. to the house. They take her to the hospital. You know, they... They make, like, little discoveries based on, you know, Derek's body. And it was like, oh, well, it doesn't look like there's anybody who has broken into the house. Yeah. And, you know, there's a word saying that Derek has been abusive. So who's to say what really happened here? Yeah, but the uh, the forensic specialist was like, I've never seen anything outside of a car accident that could do this to a human body. Yeah. You know, so something obviously super strong did this. Yeah. Twisted Derek around like a pinata. You know, um... Uh, the detectives are Detective Shaw, played by George Young, and Detective Moss, played by uh, Nicole Brianna White. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean Young is, uh, he was the voice of one of the characters in Anthem, and he was in the, the TV series Containment. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Nicole Brianna White was in Courage Under Fire way back in the day, okay. and then did a bunch of uh, TV appearances. Yeah, a bunch of TV appearances. Sorry, I had to check my notes for a second there. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, again, like I said, kind of a who's who of, of of drama and like superhero TV. Yeah, a lot of Legends of Tomorrow, a lot of uh, Grey's Anatomy, a lot of um, crime like NCIS kind of mm-hmm. shows. Okay. So I- anytime I just mention TV appearances, those are the kind of shows I'm thinking. Yeah, about. yeah, just the long running, long standing sort of shows that yeah. everybody's going to get a gig in at some point in time. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we uh, cut to Maddie. Maddie's in the hospital. She's laying in the bed and uh, her sister, Sydney, you know, she sits right beside her and like lets her know, you know, Maddie lost her baby. Yeah, you couldn't. We, they couldn't save the baby, hon. I'm sorry. You know, like she, you know, based on the like the attack and everything else and all the stress and, every, and everything, you know, I mean, it's, you know, this is the fourth miscarriage in like several in two of years. years. Yeah, two years. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, which is, that's a lot for anyone to go through. Yeah, and the baby bump is gone. Yeah. Like, this, it's not even, like, there's not even, like, any leftover swelling. Right. So, uh, at this point, I assumed that Maddie had been unconscious for, you know, a while in the hospital. Yeah. But anyway, she, uh, she so she lost the baby, and... It's, um, uh, one of the detectives shows up and, like, kind of cooperates the story, so on and so forth, you know, um, uh, just... Revealing that detail about yeah. how many, you know, miscarriages she has had. And uh, two weeks later, Puff have uh, passed by, and the sister offers to stay with Maddie, 
But Maddie's like, no, don't worry about it. You know, you don't need to miss out of work. You know, she. Yeah. And, and it was funny. At one point, while she was in the hospital, the sister was dressed up as like a princess. Right. You know, or something because she works at like kids' parties, so on and so forth. Like, she, yeah, she, she works at like a well, it's it's a theme restaurant. I yeah. think. Well, uh, it's it's, it's uh, I forget exactly what it's called, mm-hmm. but there is a theme restaurant in Seattle where this movie is set. Yeah. Uh, which, where. Which I didn't really find out that it was set in Seattle until later on. Yeah, when they showed know. the Space Needle. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, um, but there is that theme restaurant. A buddy of mine has been to it, uh, Bob, who we've talked about before. Okay, cool. Yeah, where they, they dress up in, like, princess outfits and stuff. And, look like, for the kids. Yeah, so she works there. Then, let's see. Oh, yeah, there was something else. In the uh, investigation, they mentioned that, like, there were handprints upside down, like... You know, in, in inside the apartment, pretty much. Or, yeah. You know, like whoever did this to the body was somehow hanging from the ceiling yeah. or something. Yeah. Which I mean, that that's something that like you don't really think about too much on because you're just trying to like focus on what's happening in the yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's something that plays back later on. Let's see, at some point, there's another chase sequence inside of the uh, inside of the house. And, yeah. Uh, Ma- Maddie this... sees the this this thing like, scuttling around. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, like there's this very there's this beautiful overhead shot of like the in, the interior of the house like it made me feel like I was looking inside of a dollhouse yeah I, I got that same feeling you know yeah. like yeah you know, like she was running up the stairs she was and, locking doors you know, and closing windows and running around real fast to do that yeah pretty much yeah and it was that that's some, that's another reason why I really appreciate this movie like the cinematography you know is unique it it. Yeah, um, definitely makes this like a better picture. Oh yeah, the, you know? the 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 director of photography for this movie was uh, was Michael Burgess. Mm-hmm. And if, if we're gonna get into the crew, then I also want to talk about the score in a second. But sure. the the DP in this movie was Michael Burgess, who I think this was his first major film as DP. Mm-hmm. But he was second unit director of photography for Aquaman and for Logan mm-hmm. and a bunch of other movies that had that are known for good shot composition, mm-hmm. right? Um, he's definitely, I'm looking forward to more of his work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and since we're getting into the technical side, the music, which I already have two notes here that we've skipped over. I mean, I, when I, when I take notes on a film, yeah. uh, I just kind of write down my thoughts as I watch. Right. And twice now I've mentioned that the music is kind of kick-ass for this. <laughs> yeah. And the music is really kind of intense and cool. Mm-hmm. And I, and, uh, the music is done by, uh, Joseph Bashara, who, who did, the music for the Conjuring series mm-hmm. and the Insidious yeah, movies. Yeah, makes sense. You yeah. know, having somebody who's worked with you before still work with you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know. After all that goes down, um, you know, Maddie's in the room by herself and then, like, Sydney, you know, peeks out of the corner by the, uh, the, the, one of the windows right by the bedroom pretty much and, like, kind of scares her up. But, it's, like, it didn't, it doesn't play that jump scare sort of music. Like, it doesn't have this, huh, sort of thing mm. or, like, like, you know, it, it. I really appreciate that from the score too. Now that you mentioned well, it, well, we're. Um, um, well, I think we're skipping over a thing, aren't we? Uh, no, it's, I don't think so. Um, but okay, because she starts to see the. Um, she she does the running through the house, locking the doors right. thing because mm-hmm. she saw the lights flicker. Yeah. Right, the street light. So she's running around locking all the doors, and she right. comes up in the kitchen, the back door, and it's open. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, and d- isn't this when... Because she was inside the house whenever Maddie was outside the house, and Maddie was, like, by a window, and she invites Maddie back inside. Even though she says, don't come and see me, she's still uh, you mean Sydney. Anyway, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 Sydney, Sydney, the sister. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... Okay, um... I think we're. I thought we were skipping over a scene, but I, I could be misremembering the order of things. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. It's fine. Um. Yeah. So if Cindy comes and visits anyway, she lets her into the window to the house. You know. Yeah. She's and, like, I put uh, de- my key have... didn't work. Well, I put deadbolts on all the doors. Right. Yeah. 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 So if Cindy comes into the house and, uh, you know, they're having this conversation. I was like, I'm sorry about you lost your baby, so on and so forth. And I was like, it's fine. It would have been nice, you know, to kind of have the baby, even though it was with him. You know, because I have like a blood connection to somebody, and she's like, "Wait a minute, I'm I'm your whole sister here. Like, what's, <laughs> like, what, what's exactly. going on?" I was like, "Well, the truth is, I am adopted." Yeah, at eight years old, I was adopted by mom and dad, and I have no memory of my life before being adopted. Yeah, 
Yeah. And and this is treated like a big revelation. Like it's a horror movie. Music sting. And yeah, like it was, Sydney looks like, was like scared. Like like I'm adopted. And I was like, okay, I, I, that's that's a weird. It's a weird place to play that music, but that's fine, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we are. Um, we're not skipping a thing. Yeah. This is this is um. This is the next thing. Yeah. This is the next thing. That's that that's was, my bad. That was not. Skipping. That was my bad. <laughs> so the next thing that we also not skipped. Uh, <laughs> Is uh, somebody is giving out a tour um, in Seattle, and uh, you know, it's like she was telling the story. I was like, "Well, the the new Seattle is built like one story above the old Seattle, pretty much. And if you look down there, you can still see, you know, the hallways of yeah. the old Seattle yeah. below." Which us. is which is a real place you can. It's a real thing you can do. Yeah, that's that's not made up for the film. Yeah, uh, Seattle was rebuilt after a big fire on top of itself. Yeah. And so if you, there are tours of the underground where you can still see storefronts and cobblestone streets mm-hmm. with the ground is above you. It's it's really kind of creepy and cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice place for this. Um, you know, because like this this tourist is here, and you you don't know who the tourist is really. You know, an aspect of this film, and I was mm. like, you're really like, who? I don't I don't understand. I don't get it. And then the the tourist is kidnapped. Yeah, the tour guide leader. You know, tour guide. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah uh, this is this is a uh, played by. Uh, Jean Louisa Kelly, mm-hmm. uh, she was for a bunch of TV appearances, obviously. Also, she was the uh, the female lead in the Call of the Wild movie, mm-hmm. the one cool. with the, you yeah. know, the, the with Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. Tom, no, Harrison no. Ford. I'm yeah. sorry, Harrison Ford. I am sorry, Mr. Ford and Mr. Hanks. I should not have got you mixed up. <laughs> no, I don't even know how you did that. I have no idea either. I thought Harrison Ford, and my brain said Tom Hanks, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely the type of movie Tom Hanks would be in, I'm yeah. sure, but I think that character's a little bit too grizzled for him. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so the tour, you know, guide, um, she is kidnapped and she is tied inside this house, this uh, this attic of this house, pretty much. Yeah. You know, where this uh, this shadow figure, this character, somebody who we see commit the crime earlier in the film, did this to her and like tied her up, put a tape on her mouth, so on and so forth. And I was like, "What's so? Wh- well, why are you keeping her alive? I'm I'm confused." Yeah, you and know? it's at this point that the, a nearby radio kind of comes to life on its own, and then you hear a voice, which is the same voice from 1993. Yeah, it's like you have no idea how long I've waited for this. Right. But I and I'm I'm gonna save you for last. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and so the woman is like freaking out. Yeah. And it, it's really creepy. Yeah. Uh, at some point, uh, Dr. Weaver gets a call, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, she gets a message saying, you know, I have to, I have to cut out the cancer. Yeah, but it's in that evil, creepy voice. Yeah, same, same evil, creepy voice, you know, that we, we mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Uh, the voice, by the way, done by Ray Chase, mm-hmm. who is, is a, is known, is a known voice actor for all kinds of different cartoons and stuff. Um, at some point, Maddie... Maddie is doing laundry in her house, mm-hmm. and you know at some point she uh, she kneels down to close the laundry door to dry her laundry, and then she sees Doctor Weaver's face on the other side of it. But Doctor mm-hmm. Weaver's not there; like they don't live together. You know, it's 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 a very yeah. it's a very interesting sort of thing that's happening here. Um, and th- this is a really cool shot too, because uh, if you uh, once again shout out to the DP, because mm-hmm. uh, you you're looking. At the open, like, you're looking at the dryer from the side. Yeah. The door is open, and through the glass of the door, you can see someone else's face, but there's obviously no one behind the door. Yeah. It's a really cool-looking shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after that, Maddie's entire... So what are you entire... doing in my house? This is my house! Like... Yeah. But Mad- Maddie's entire background is transformed, pretty much, and now, like, she can see what's happening in Weaver's house, pretty much. Yeah. And, you know? and um... I wrote here, I said, it's like a melting effect. Yeah. Like, the whole background around Maddie melts and, like, reforms into Dr. Weaver's house. Yeah. And it's a really cool-looking effect. Also, before this, uh, every time the lights flicker, mm-hmm. uh, Maddie, Maddie looks like she's in pain. Yeah. Right? So that's kind of our... The audience has signaled that something creepy is about to happen. Yeah. It, I mean, the lights flickering is a, is a go-to yeah. creepy, you know, thing. But yeah. the... Maddie's head hurting. Okay, well, something. I wrote in my notes. Why does it hurt whenever the lights flicker? Like yes. I wrote that in my notes. Yeah. You know. Uh, and then there was that melting effect that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I really love the atmosphere of that. You know, yeah. and like the the trick that it plays. You know. Um, 
yeah, this 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 figure that you know, the 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 killer of the film basically mm. um goes goes to the all of a uh, Weaver's um poster uh, our, all of all of her trophies and gets this trophy that she got. Uh, from the surgery that she must have done very well at, obviously. Yeah, you know? so it's a it's an excellence award in surgery with like a, a doctor the he, the double helix of uh, the snake mm-hmm. catechus mm-hmm. or conductor or whatever it's called yeah. that thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, they they formed they fashioned it into a weapon, you know. And she and this this figure stabs Weaver, you know, several times with mm. this with her award, which is it's just great. It's yeah, great. And, and, and beats her with the back of the back you end know, of the reward. It, it's great. It's great that, you know, they, they use they use her reward to, you know, kill them with yeah. like it's it, it's great. You know? I wrote in my notes, the cancer killed her with blunt force trauma to the dot 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 everything. <laughs> to the everything, that's right. Yeah. Let's see. And Maddie watches it happen. Yeah. She's screaming for help yeah. but nobody can hear her. Yeah. And and Maddie is watching this woman that she's never met mm-hmm. uh get just murdered by this thing with long hair and a long black coat that doesn't move right. Yeah. It moves weird. Yeah. And and I, I didn't put together why it moved weird yeah. until later, so I'm not gonna spoil that part. But right. it's it it really doesn't really triggers that uncanny valley. Mm-hmm. Effect mm-hmm. with the way it moves, it's, it's cool. Yeah, uh, the the killer who I I'm not going to name yet unless you really want to. Um, the physical act is uh, is played by uh, Marina Maz- Mazeppa, who is a stunt performer. Cool, and she's really good. Cool. Let's see. My next note after this, um, basically, there's she's she's from a team of doctors, um, Mr. Um, Doctor Weaver, you mm-hmm. know, and of course the police find out about this and they make some other discoveries. Um, you know, but like she used to work at the Simeon Research Hospital mm-hmm. in this during this time frame, and along then, with uh, these Doctor Fields and mm-hmm. Doctor Gregory. Yeah, so uh, F- Fields is you know obviously next on the list. You see mm-hmm. Fields, and then played by uh, Christian Clemenson, mm-hmm. who was in Apollo thirteen and the, and the Big Lebowski. He's a, he's a pretty good character actor. I wonder who he played in in. The Big Lebowski. I don't know. I've never seen it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's something we will fix for this podcast. I am certain. Probably. Probably but... so. <laughs> Basically, my next note, I don't know if... So, Maddie sees the second kill happening. Yeah, Fields. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Fields being being killed uh, where the, the killer comes in through the window... Mm-hmm. And stabs him to death in his bed. Yeah. Uh, and then she goes to the police. Yeah. And tells them, you know, I, 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 I don't know why, but I saw this happen. Right. And I saw out the window that it's across the street from this well-known uh, apartment complex mm-hmm. with this well-known like sign on the top of it, and and help me. Yeah. Like I, I keep seeing this killer kill people. Yeah. Right. And so they they go to the apartment complex to mm-hmm. kind of humor her, right? And that's when they discovered the body yeah. of the dude of Dr. Fields. Yeah. 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 Yeah, at some... It's, yeah, Gabe... You know, uh, Gabriel gets on the phone and talks to Maddie, and, uh, you know, she calls Maddie Emily. Um, and But she responds to it as if, like, some unconscious part of her knows that that's her real name. Yeah. There's a cut to go, so she she goes to the mom to her 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 adopted mom's character mm. pretty much, mm. um, and she was like, you know, do you have anything in the backlogs to like, you know, uh, to explain this sort of thing, so on and so forth. And I was like, well, I've got this videotape from your ninth birthday party, yeah. pretty much. It, the mom you know? played by Susanna Thompson, mm-hmm. who was uh, the Borg queen on Star Trek Voyager, okay. and who was uh, Moira Queen, uh, Oliver Queen's mom on the TV series Arrow. Just to, for the viewers. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a ninth birthday um, party take, where she's sitting down and she's about to blow. Out, well, I think she she already blew out the candles to the cake, but she hasn't cut into it yet. And then like she goes to her side and was like, "Stop it, Gabriel." And I was like, "Who are you talking to?" And I was like, "Gabriel." Like. Yeah. You know, like like as if it's obvious that Gabriel's there, and we're we're meant to assume that Gabriel is like the imaginary friend. Right. You know. Of. Right. Of, of Maddie. 
of Emily. Right. Now, now uh, uh, of Maddie slash Emily. We're gonna I'm gonna keep calling her Maddie because that's her name in the mm-hmm. in, in her for all of her life. Right. Turns out her name was Emily. Yeah. And uh, and before she was adopted. Right. Because in the phone call, uh, that she gets in the police station while she's trying to tell them about the second murder. Yeah. Uh, her phone rings in the bathroom, and it's the creepy voice. Yeah. And it's the creepy voice is like, uh, "Hello, Emily, and my name is Madeline." And no, Madeline is the na- is the fake name your fake parents gave. You. Right. Yeah. You know, and it, and it's like, oh shit. Let's see. Yeah. So uh, the detectives are doing detective work to try and mm-hmm. figure out who, why the victims are connected. Yeah. And they come up with the Simeon Center, and they come up with the three doctors, and there's only one more on the list. Yeah. Doctor uh, Doctor Gregory. Uh, played by Amir Abuela, mm-hmm. who was in uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Cool. Uh, he, and so the Mr. Detective, uh, Detective um, uh, Shaw, mm-hmm. goes tearing off to this guy's house. Yeah. And when he gets there, he finds him dead in the bathtub. Yeah. Uh, obviously repeatedly stabbed. Mm-hmm. But you can see Maddie yeah. standing in the bathroom. Right. Screaming. But her voice is like from coming from down a tunnel. He's still here. He's still here. Yeah. And then you see this, the long haired creature that we've only seen, like, that moves weird in a couple of, like, glimpses. Mm-hmm. Now we see it for real and it starts a chase sequence with the detective. Yeah. Which is pretty great. Um, yeah. And yeah. it, it kind of, you don't know who's chasing who for a while. Yeah. Like, the detective chases the, uh, the monster out, but mm-hmm. then the monster, like, chases the detective through part of the underground. Mm hmm. And and it, it's it's a, a pretty cool little fight. Yeah. Um, the detective does not uh, he he manages to fight off the monster until it it like crawls up into a ceiling vent and escapes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it it's it's a good little action sequence and it kind of does a lot to break up the tension. Yeah, which has been building and and I think that's a good choice. You know, after that, um, Maddie seeks to. Uh, to unlock some of her, some of Emily's memories, pretty much, you know. So she's yeah. like a hypnotherapist, you know, try to see if there's anything that, you know, can yeah, be brought yeah. to the, life. The police much. have recommended a hypnotherapist they work with to look at repressed memories. So yeah. they, that's what they're doing. They're in Maddie's house. Yeah, they. Uh, and she she goes back to this memory. The mother was pregnant with Sydney at the time frame. This this Gabriel creature, this uh, imaginary friend, you know. Um, is is talking to her? Yeah, she she got in trouble for ruining the the congratulations. You're about to have a baby cake. Yeah, welcome yeah. baby girl is what it says. Right, and uh, but yeah, she she's in the room and Gabriel is talking to her and Gabriel's like, you know, you should go out and, and get yourself some cake anyway. You know, yeah, and I was like, why not? Yeah, so yeah. She, cut, cut yourself some cake and take some to your mom. It would be nice. Yeah, so you know, she she goes out there with a knife and she goes to the cake and then of course the. The whole uh, room changing thing happens again. Yeah, the melting scenery happens again. You know, and you find out that uh, she's in uh, the mother's room, pretty much like the mother and father's room, with the knife held over her ba- her stomach, the baby belly. You know, yeah. the baby belly, pretty much. It's it's pretty great. It's a great it's a great scene. You know, obviously they stuck her out of it, and then they make sure that that's not going to happen. Obviously, yeah. you know, like it's. And then, and at this point, we're still you know operating that. This Gabriel is Maddie's imaginary friend, right? And Sydney's like, "Why didn't you ever talk about Gabriel mm-hmm. growing up? I mean, we grew up together, right? Right?" And Maddie's like, "Because with you here, I didn't need him anymore. Yeah. So he was gone. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so that, that's I thought that was that was pretty cool. Um, but then they arrest Maddie because something happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, do you do you want to go ahead? Okay, oh, this, you're, you're the one doing yeah, plot. I'm yeah, just... go ahead. I mean, this is... My next note is uh, something else that happens. Um, the, t- the the tour guide... Um, yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. That's again. what it yeah. was. Yeah, the, yeah. T- the tour guide uh, escapes. You know, she gets out of her, you know, um, her bondage pretty much. Yeah, the, she manages attic, to break her ropes. And, and uh, she falls throughout the, like, the very top of this house pretty much. And come to find out, it's the same house. So yeah, it's has, Maddie's house. Yeah, it's Maddie's house. So Maddie's house has this tour guide stored in her attic, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, so obviously, she, obviously she needs to go to the hospital because yeah. she just fell, like, a, a couple of different stories down on top of this table, completely crushed it. Yeah. This was my know? first, what the fuck, moment in yeah. my notes. <laughs> like, yeah. what? Yeah. 
yeah, falls down on the family in front of, you know, all the guests and such. And, uh, so Maddie gets arrested, and of course she's getting talked to, so she, the, the light flickering thing happens again, you know, in front of the, both of the detectives, pretty much, mm-hmm. you know. And, like, Gabriel is on, like, the phone, like, still yeah, has a Ma- creepy Maddie, voice. Yeah, Maddie, you know? uh, no, uh, Detective, uh, uh, Detective Shaw. Kakoa, yeah. Yeah, Kakoa Shaw. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess like a call or something. Yeah, or... He, his, his his cell phone rings. Yeah. And it kind of glitches out as it's ringing, and he answers it, and it's Gabriel's voice. Yeah. The creepy voice. So now everyone can hear it. Yeah. You know. And she's like, well, I don't know what to do about that information, so we're just going to put you in the jail. And it's like yeah. one of those, you know, um, free access, like several different women are in the same sort of cell, pretty much. Yeah, these are like... You know, working like, girls picked up off the street, you, you know, know, kind of a thing. Yeah, like a holding station, pretty much. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, not, it's the drunk tank, but for prostitutes, pretty basically. Much. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, yeah, she gets thrown in there. You know, did they? I don't think they mentioned the tourist's name at this point in time. No, they don't mention the tour guide's name. The tour yet. guide's name yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. After the um, where the scene of her being thrown in the jail is interspersed with mm-hmm. uh, Sydney. Yeah, going to the hospital. Going to the hospital, which looks ominous as hell from a distance. That's a great location. I don't know if it's a real location, but I would love to go see it in person if it's real. It looks creepy as F. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, she goes there. She she tries to find some more information on, you know, this this May uh, patient who was there beforehand, you know. Yeah, Emily May, who we, we have found out through the police work and through... The repressed memories was Maddie's name when yep. she was a kid. Right. Maddie was the patient. Was mm-hmm. was was patient May. Right. And you can see some of the news clippings from the the montage earlier. Yeah. In the file that she's looking through. Right. So whatever was causing the, whatever I mean the Gabriel entity mm-hmm. that was causing all those destructive stuff from back in ninety three is somehow connected to Maddie. Is is yeah, connected to Emily. Yeah. That's that's. I mean, that's the truth, you know. Yeah. Uh, eventually, you find some more uh, videotapes, some more files on, you know, Patient May. Mm-hmm. And then there's this reveal of Gabriel, who is a parasitic twin. Yeah. Uh, it's a teratoma. Yeah. It's when you, uh, when there's twins in utero, uh, which happens a lot more than people realize. Right. Like, a lot of babies in utero are twins, most of the twins are reabsorbed by one of the other ones. Yeah. So that it, it's not... It, twins are rare because the reabsorption doesn't happen, and that's the rare part. The right. actual splitting off into two things happens, like, for most pregnancies at some point. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, so a teratoma is when you don't fully reabsorb your other twin and you both grow. Right. And this other person is what's called a parasitic twin. Yeah. Usually they're conjoined at like the hip or the or you know some part of the chest or something. Gabriel is connected through like her back of her head pretty much. Yeah. Like Gabriel Gabriel you know, and Maddie share a brain. Yeah. They share a brain, and uh, you know she had like it was it was it was so neat like the. Uh, the, the effects of, like, having this, like, you know, body behind this other body, pretty much. like that It's has really creepy arms. looking. Like, it's great. I love it. Yeah, it's it's like this malformed entity on young Maddie or Emily's back. Yeah. With a face and, like, these creepy looking arms and that are real skinny and claw-like. And, right. Oh, I'm right. getting chills. Yeah. Yeah, so basically the whole line, cut out the cancer... That's in reference to Dr. Weaver saying cut out the cancer trying yeah. to get this because parasitic par- part of A parasitic twin is considered a cancer. It's considered yeah. a teratoma. Yeah. So she wasn't just speaking hyperbolically. She meant remove the Move cancer. The cancer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like, they, they couldn't get it all. Right. Because yeah. it was they didn't want to give Emily brain damage. Yeah. Or so like they, kill Emily. Yeah. You know? so, so they excised as much as they could. And shoved and it then back in there. And sealed Gabriel's face yeah. inside the back of Maddie's head. Yeah. Which is really fucked up. <laughs> it is, for Gabriel's sake, for sure. Well, you for know? anybody's sake. Just to watch it's, it was fucked up. It was great. Ugh. I, love, <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, that, that happens. And obviously there's some, um, you know, some backlog sort of information. Because, you know, during the fight with uh, Derek, Derek pushed Maddie up against his wall. Like, broke the wall, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, it kind of, like, reset you know, Gabriel, Gabriel has been awoken. Now. Yeah, it woke up Gabriel, and it kind of, like, opened up the back of her head. You know, so, like, like Gabriel and Maddie are, like, the same person, but Gabriel, Gabriel yeah. sees 
on the back of uh, Maddie's head, basically. Yeah. So like she, her, Gabriel's face comes out of Maddie's head. So yeah. So and, and and then we see in what is is a really great sequencing mm-hmm. decision. Yeah. We go from watching these videos of the tumor being removed and the backstory straight back to the prison scene. Yeah. Where Maddie is being pushed around by these other women, and then she transforms in full view of everyone into Gabriel. Yeah. Gabriel, her head opens up in the back, and, like, the fucked up face comes out, Mm -hmm. and her arms dislocate and twist around backwards. And she kills everyone. She kills every single, like, it's ridiculous. I love it. I love it so much. I love the fact that this movie can just get weird yeah and abstract and it was it was great it, it took a know? left turn at the corner of bonkers and bananas and That's it went it. all out you know uh this uh, i wrote in my notes uh it looks like gabriel just john wick the police station because yeah. she just she tore did. her ass yeah. tore her way through it uh when the guard came running she basically liquefied the guard through the bars yeah and then used his keys to unlock the door. Mm-hmm. Stalks into the evidence room where she's just murdering cops left and right. Yeah. Gets her weapon. Gets the coat. You know, like Gabriel is fully in control at this point. Yeah, pretty and much. And goes into the main area of the police station and just starts slaughtering cops. There's, yeah. you know, 20 or 30 cops who are all shooting at her. And it's not doing a damn thing. Yeah. And it, it, it and oh, all kinds of. It's gory and it's, it's disgusting. It's a great sequence. I love it. Like you know, after after that happens, like he he escapes and he like he um he damages that other police detective, not Kakoa. Kakoa is is fine enough to yeah. Kakoa is you know, he he manages on. to kind of to kind of disembowel yeah uh, Moss who yeah. is alive but like holding her insides right. together yeah and the only surviving cop. Uh, is like I'll help her. You go chase that thing. Yeah. Call call the the ambulance. Why am I, go, why am I call the to... fucking national guard? You know, <laughs> like why why am I why am I calling nine one one? Call the ambulance. Like, yeah. like why, Just, why yeah. don't I call the cops right now? I see you all here. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, Sid Sid goes to the to the hospital because that's where the you know the the tour guide person. Right. is being because Sid figures out who the tour guide person was, which is you know Emily's. You know, birth mother. Yeah, Serena May, yeah. Emily's birth mother, who gave birth to her at 15. Yeah. She was raped, yeah. and this baby was a rape baby. Right. Right. Uh, so Emily goes there to try and warn Detective Shaw, who is, she thinks is at the hospital, right. that Gabriel is a parasitic twin and is taking control of Maddie's body, Yeah, and she gets to the hospital, but Gabriel's already there. Yeah. And she, uh, Gabriel he, he is in the room, and it, it's, it's, whoa. I know. Yeah. It, the reason the reason that I, I said that Gabriel moved weird before is because it's Maddie walking backwards. Yeah. And it, it but her arms are dislocated and twisted around. Yeah. So like her hands are reversed, which is why the hand hands were upside, upside down. down. Yep. And yep. It, it it makes sense from a logical standpoint, but it's really creepy to look at and yep. it's really cool looking. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, at some point, you know, G- Gabriel is about to just end Sydney. Yeah, he tosses a big, heavy hospital bed mm-hmm. and like kind of crushes Sydney against the wall. Yeah, right. And then picks up the because the knife is, is has been knocked out of her hands at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, but oh, by the de- detective who showed up running. Yeah, who showed up at the police station at, at the hospital. And the detective goes down. This is Shaw mm-hmm. goes down, drops his gun. Yeah, and Gabriel picks up the gun and has it on Sydney's head. Yeah, and you know. Uh, and Sydney's like, Maddie, I know you can hear me. Gabriel, it, it, Gabriel ate your babies. He yeah. absorbed the fetal tissue from all your miscarriages, and yeah. that's why you weren't able to have a baby. He used it to regenerate himself. Right. You have to fight this. Yeah. Right. And then bang. Yep. Yeah. Sydney's and dead. Sydney's head sprays all over the wall. Yeah. And then uh, really caught me off guard. Yeah, I really thought Sydney was going to survive. <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and and so then Gabriel turns his attention to mom. Yeah. And mom does the one thing that Gabriel would never expect and says, I'm sorry. Yeah. I should never have let you go to the hospital. I should have loved you anyway. Right. I'm sorry for everything I've done. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, oh, <laughs> the way Gabriel moves is so creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Gabriel, 
but Serena's life to an end too. You know, the, yeah. the EKG's machine life just goes to a dial tone pretty mm-hmm. much, and you know, yay, that's it. You know, the the the, the villain wins the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except not really. Except not really. No, Maddie. Maddie finally took control of her body again. You know. Yeah. And she's so. The, the, there was this concept. Gabriel is sh- just showing Maddie what she, what he wants her to see, basically, right. because they share this part of the brain that mm-hmm. controls like the vision part, the visual cortex. Yeah. You know? So, I was like, you know, Gabriel was in, in control of that, and then now Maddie can, was in control of that and was. Pre- projecting this image into his mind mm. whatever he sees it, so you know. so now we kind of rewind to the point where sydney is like he absorbed your children you have to fight it right and then this is where you see that maddie kind of takes control of her hand right right because she's she's standing there in her like ghost form where she's been watching all the murders happen yeah watching gabriel kill everybody yeah and now she kind of looks at her hand and now she can move again yeah so she kind of clenches her fist a little bit and so uh, now we we hear uh, everything goes black, right? And she's like, "I can do all the same mind tricks you can do now, you know." And now you're trapped in here, and I've taken my body back. I'm taking everything back. Yeah, right. And so she she has locked Gabriel in a prison cell in her mind. Yeah, and like reabsorbs him into the back of her head, and her head closes up, and it's so fucking gross. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love it. And come to find out, Sydney wasn't shot, and yep. the mom wasn't stabbed. Right. And the uh, she's like, she runs to Sydney and, and is like, "You got to call the orderlies. You can't move this bed. It's too heavy." She's like, "It was always my body. I was always strong enough." And she just lifts the bed off of her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so Sydney's like, uh, she's like, I, I thought I wanted a blood connection with somebody. But the connection was right in front of me all along. I don't care if we weren't born together. You will always be my sister. And so, like, the mom has this, like, beatific smile on her face. And everything is not exactly happy, but it's unending. I mean, it's better. Yeah, it's better than it would have been otherwise. Yeah. And then, of course, you know. As we're zooming out. You know, there's a little bit of, like, light flickering and, Mm -hmm. like, a little bit of technical, you know, nonsense. Yeah, so so Gabriel is locked away. And he's as, as she's locking him away... He's like, I'll be back, and yeah. she's like, Yeah, but I'll be ready. Yeah, she, yeah, he's he, he's still there. Yeah, so Gabriel's alive and can still affect things, you know. Uh, so, and that's what, and then we we cut to credits. Yeah, and oh. <laughs> I know, yeah, like that's uh, what we get into. When I first watched this movie, I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because we saw. Maddie watched the kills happen. Maddie was with her sister when one of them happened. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it possible that she's the same person, but then you go back and you realize... Now, Just now talking about it, I came to the realization that Maddie is an unreliable narrator for those scenes. Yeah. Because Gabriel is fucking with her mind and showing her what he wants her to see. Right. Right? So it all makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it, it, It... I like it. It's really well done. Yeah. And I kind of do want to see the sequel to it, if there is one. If there is one. Um, my thing about that, there are a couple of things, actually. The one the one scene that doesn't really make so much sense is the one where, like, she was in, like, the restroom, um, and, like, the, the door gets blown back against her, but if, it, if it's Gabriel the whole time, Gabriel is technically, like, behind Maddie, mm-hmm. technically speaking, so I don't even understand how that would have even happened. Well, I mean, I... That was part of the things that uh, Gabriel was showing Maddie. I'm pretty sure Gabriel just ripped the door off the hinges. I guess. You That's know. probably about right, actually. Yeah. Like, like I said, unreliable narrator. Yeah. Right? You know, Maddie only sees what Gabriel wants her to see. Yeah. So if Gabriel wants her to run away scared, that's what she's going to see herself doing. Yeah. Right? Because if, if it, in that moment, with Gabriel in control of her body, Maddie doesn't know what's real and what's not. Yeah. So the audience doesn't know what's real and what's not. Yeah. So and I kind of and I kind of would have liked that other end, the darker ending where um, everyone dies where where you know the sister and mother die but I guess I guess you needed the sister to live so that way she can kind of like give about that message which yeah. there with the dialogue the dialogue at the some of the performances are questionable um per se and a little bit campy yeah a lot of the child actors are a little wooden and stiff you know like especially from the early like flashback scenes right. and from the like the the children 
like Emily is a child and the, right. the, her mom is a child and so forth and so on. Some of the dialogue isn't great. Some of it's yeah. really kind of cliche. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, Detective Moss is very obviously just the stereotypical sassy black cop character. Right. Right. Which, it works for the story. That's fine. I wish they'd done more with her, but... Yeah. Or, or let her be funnier. Because mm-hmm. at one point, she has, like, the funniest joke in the movie, but it's not really... It's not a comedy movie, so they don't focus on the humor. Right. But at one point, uh, Maddie talks to a police sketch artist about the killer that she's been seeing. Yeah. And describes, like, the Gabriel's, what we find out later is Gabriel's all messed up, like, malformed, yeah. non-symmetrical face. Mm-hmm. And the woman looks at it and says, so you, you want me to put out an APB on Sloth from the Goonies? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I wish they had let her unleash more with some of that sarcastic wit. Yeah. But yeah. I guess it kind of would have uh, battled back against the tone, too. Yeah. Yeah. Know? I think so it would have was, undermined the tone a there's bit. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot to do with there. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's technically very well done. Like the cinematography is gorgeous, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the it's very atmospheric, you know. Especially all those scenes where everything's building around Maddie mm-hmm. and like her perspective change. Like that's great. Um, and it's very relevant now, mm-hmm. specifically right now, due to men being in control of women's bodies and like the narrative yeah. of like you know an anti-abortion. Oh, I, pretty you know, much. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. But yeah, that does make a lot. That does that does turn this kind of into a message movie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Derek was in control of the bot. Like, Derek, you know, uh, has this very, like, controlling atmosphere about him, yeah. you know. And Gabriel is literally in control of Maddie's body in those scenes, you know. Yeah. Um, but, like, what with everything that's going down in Texas now and, you know, everything mm-hmm. that that's all about, I think it's very, it's a very relevant sort of subject matter. Yeah. You know. I Honestly, I didn't put any of that together, but you're 100% right about that. You know. That's, that's... I like this movie more now. Yeah. <laughs> because of that. It, it does make sense. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, all told, as a movie, I'd give this movie like a good solid seven. Yeah. Same here. Right, right, right. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, you know, in my top movies of all time yeah. favorite. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how much of that is because I'm not really a fan of horror movies. I'm sure. That's like, probably part of it. Um, Very well put together. The cinematography is gorgeous. The score is... The score kind of wavers between... You know, acceptable and great, mm-hmm. like kind of yeah. jumps between the two. Yeah, it's never bad. Right. It's never never takes you out of the film. Right. Some moments are insanely cool. Some moments are just like, oh, I guess that was music. Yeah, like and which I guess is kind of the point. Yeah, because you don't want the the music taking away from the scene. Yeah, some of the performances were a little wooden. Some of them were a little over the top. Right. Uh, the physical performance, uh, I have to, to, to say. Uh, uh, Mariana Mazepa, yeah, or Mazepa, however you pronounce. I don't know how you pronounce your name. I'm sorry, I couldn't find anyone saying your name out loud when I did my research, so I apologize if I'm getting your name wrong. Mm-hmm. But your physical performance, yeah, as Gabriel was top notch, yeah, super creepy, yeah, spot on, yeah. Oh, it was great. And there were a couple of times where I noticed that Gabriel's hands weren't backwards in mm-hmm. a couple of shots, like especially in the action scenes, which. I get it. Sometimes you miss it in, in the digital department. Sometimes you don't have the time to, or it doesn't work. You can't right. edit a scene that fast yeah. without it looking really bad. Yeah. Um. So I guess that kind of is a point against the film. But if you're not looking for it, you won't notice. You won't it. notice it. Yeah. And because I did, I didn't notice that. The, you know, I did do of uh, the the creepy like this this woman. Uh. uh uh, Mar- Mariana, I'm gonna say Mazepa, and and I hope that's right. It's M A Z E P A. Is it Mazepa, 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 Mazepa? Mazepa. I, that, that was that would be my guess. I I I couldn't find her name being spoken aloud anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so, right. um, but the Gabriel, the movement mm-hmm. is very much like looks sped up. Right. And then slow down and sped up and slow down. Yeah. But it's not. That's just how she moved. Yeah. And like that, I, I looked it up and I was very surprised to see that that wasn't camera trickery. Mm-hmm. That's just how this actress moves. Yeah. So she's a, an incredibly gifted physical, like Andy Circus level gifted physical performer in mm-hmm. my opinion. Yeah. Andy Circus who did like Gollum. Right, right. And, you know, like the, the mocap guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, I I am very much going to be following this woman's career. Yeah, cool. Uh, going forward, this is this was great. Yeah, the Gabriel's voice I thought could have used a little more something to differentiate it from just creepy bad guy voice, just I guess. like the growly "I'm gonna kill you" yeah, I guess. kind of a. But then again, you know, these are nitpicks. Yeah, and all in all, this is definitely a very watchable, very good movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it w- it would still be on HBO Max uh, throughout the next few days. Um, it's through October tenth. Yeah, so you know. I'm so sh- so, uh, so this is this is the first Wednesday in October. Yeah, I'm sure. So yeah, if you, if you have if you have a chance to watch *Malignant*, I would recommend it. Yeah, you got four days. You know, you got four days if you if you're watching this podcast on day one uh, that it comes out, you'll have four days to watch *Malignant*. And I really hope you watched it before we spoiled everything. But even if you didn't, it's worth watching just for the cinematography. Mm. So, <clears throat> worth it. Totally worth it. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have any final thoughts for James Wan's Malignant? That's it. Okay. Well, guys, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Dupe Movie Podcast. My name has been Brian. My name is Keith. And we will talk to you guys next time.